Welcome to the legacy of purpose. You know, there are so many things and accolades that I can talk about to introduce our guest today. I can tell you that he's the founder of Full Gospel Fellowship International and the pastor of Changing a Generation Church in Atlanta and co-pastor of Greater St. Stephen Church in New Orleans. Or I could just mention his song, Let It Rain, which is one of my favorite songs, by the way, and you would immediately know who I'm talking about. But instead, I want to introduce him as my dad's friend. They were friends for decades, and during my parents' funeral, I looked up, and there he was, with no fanfare or anything like that. He just came to support us. So today, I'd like to welcome to the Legacy of Purpose, a friend of my father's, Bishop Paul Morton. Thank Bless you. you. Thank you for being with us today. Oh, sir. I'm just honored. I'm just so proud to <laughs> see the Monroes carrying on the legacy. Thank you, sir. Thank awesome. You. Thank you for being here. Bishop Morton, thank you so much for coming. Again, it's such a pleasure to have you here. I'm honored. I really, really am. So what would you say is the most significant thing that you learned from him? I learned from him, I don't think anybody could ever break down purpose, potential, as it relates to one's life. I mean, you could actually sit under Dr. Miles Monroe, hear him at one setting, and get 50 sermons. That's how profound he was in the word. I'm telling you, there was nobody like him. Just an awesome, awesome gift. And to me, that was just key. So he just blew my mind as it related to his gift. Well, thank you. And you know, Azusa was where it all started for my dad. You know, one of the speakers couldn't attend, and my dad did that. Uh, you know, he changed all of his travel plans, and, and that's where his international mini yes. ministry took off, you know, from that event. So if, if you could sum my father up in one word, what, what would that word be? What would that word, one word be? I just think it, it has to center around purpose because that was his assignment, to give to the body of Christ purpose. And he understood his purpose. That wasn't an accident with uh, Pastor Carlton Pierce. That, and your father knew it yeah, wasn't an accident. He knew that this was the way that God was going to do it. And he always listened to God. And in listening to God, that's how God turned it around. That's right. And speaking of Azusa, you know, we wanted to kind of come back to, to this moment, the, the moment where my father, uh, his international ministry uh, kind of took off. And we want to introduce this uh, sermon. This was done back in 1991, uh, and it's my father speaking at Azusa, speaking on the topic of the power of purpose. Let's watch. Why did God call this conference? Why did you come? Why all this investment in time and money and in resources and people? Why all the travel documents and all the tickets bought? Why all the gasoline? Why all the time and the money and why all the energy? Why all the rent and why? See, what is not important if you can't figure out why? Why did God call this conference? I was coming here for <laughs> two weeks. Just asking why. Boy, do I know why. The theme to this conference is interesting. Let the fire fall. Sounds great. Came from a scripture from the book of Kings. Praise God, Elijah. Everybody know the... Exciting, isn't it? Let the fire fall. And it's a great theme. Let the fire fall. But I got a serious question to ask. Why do you want this fire to fall? See, it isn't the what that's important. Hear me tonight. We're dealing with the basic now. Why should the fire fall in the first place? What was the purpose for Elijah's fire? It might not be the purpose for this one. I was sent here. Don't look at the pastor. Look at me. I don't need his approval. I'm sent here by God. I came 2,000 miles over the ocean to see you tonight. One night. 
I'm leaving in the morning. I got no time to waste. Why should fly a fire fall? That's a serious question. It's so easy to pull out themes. They just sound good. Man, life is too short to waste, brother. We got to find out why. You know, let me give an example. Let the fire fall. You know fire can be used for a whole lot of things. For example, why should we let the fire fall? Why should it come? It could come for destruction. Fire burns things up. It could come for warming and comfort. That means keep us warm in our religiosity that we are in already. The fire can come for cooking. That means we just have potluck dinners again. To feed ourselves spiritual food. Or should the fire come for refinement? Or it could come for light. To bring light and darkness. There's a whole lot of reason why fire could come. I, I want you to ask yourself a question. Why do we want the fire to fall? If you came here for a good time, you missed the point. This de decade and destiny is too crucial for good times. Why do we want the fire to fall? Well, first of all, let's find out where we got that from. We got that from Elijah. His experience with the pagans. The purpose for Elijah's fire, I will repeat, the purpose for Elijah's fire was not refinement, it was not for warming, it was not for cooking, it was not for light, it was not even for destruction of people. It was for demonstration and testimony. That's all it was. Now, is that what God wants now? Don't answer it. Think about it. I don't think that the fire that God called this conference to get is for demonstration. You had enough of that. So why do we want this fire to fall? What fire do we want to fall? These are tough questions, man. Just never thought about it, huh? Let the fire fall. Wait a minute. What fire? And why? What exactly is in God's mind? Well, let me ask the final question. For what purpose... Does God want the fire to fall? God does nothing without a purpose. Start writing. God does nothing without a purpose. This meeting is not held for the fun of it. I'm going to give you seven principles before I take you into trouble. Proverbs chapter 19, verse 21. It's a very powerful verse of scripture. It's, it's a truth that is capsulized. You need to read it. Proverbs chapter 20, chapter 19, verse 21. It says this. It says, many are the plans in a man's heart. 
but it is the Lord's purposes that will prevail. Now, when I read that the first time, I, I really didn't understand. I pondered that for years. Here I go again. Many are the purposes in a man's heart. Many are the plans that a man makes. But it is the Lord's purposes that prevail. That means you could plan all you want. You could do all your scheming and your dreaming, your strategizing, all of your analysis and your feasibility studies and go through all the stuff. And when you finish, God says, I ain't going to quit until I get what I want. Let me tell you how serious that is. God is saying, look, let me get something straight with you. If you don't do what I want done, I'll wait for your children. That's what he means. My purpose is going to be done. If you don't do it in your generation, I am not in time. I could wait. You got to hear me tonight. You are at a point in history where God is asking a question. Are we going to go with this? Or am I going to wait for the children? That's where we are tonight. That's why I've come to warn you that if you do not move this time, He'll wait for the children. Not a one minute except the few. And he says, I'll wait for the children. Why? I'm not in time. I got all the time in the universe. God does not think in terms of individuals. He thinks in terms of generations. You're part of something big. He says, make your plans, but you better find out my purpose first. Do you know something? It is sad. What he's really saying is, you could make your plans and go through all of your work, and in the end, you miss it. Because you didn't do what I intended you to do. There are people who went to college and studied four years, and went through all of that work, and in the end, God told them, that's not what I wanted you to do. And they wasted four good years. What God is really trying to say is, before you plan, find the purpose. Oh, please hear me. Wow, the two most important days in the life of a human being is the day they were born and the day they figure out why. And that's purpose. You know, your purpose disciplines you. Once you're in your purpose, there are friends and things that you just don't do anymore. You know, my father believed in influencing governments with the kingdom of God. Uh, what are your thoughts on this, and how do you think uh, he accomplished this in his, his purpose on this earth? Well, I think you answered it in what you just talked about. He knew what the kingdom was all about, God's way of doing things, and he was going to fit that in into every assignment that he had because he knew why he was born. He knew what he was called to do. He knew what his assignment was, and he fulfilled it. And you talk about a true true kingdom representative, Dr. Miles Monroe, was a good, awesome kingdom representative. Why? That's the question. It would be sad, all the work that the Ministry of Health did, higher dimensions, all the work of the choir practicing all night, all the work of all the committees, all the advertisement and the thousands of dollars that went in on the television and all the different print media, all that stuff, and we still have a purpose. Purpose is the original intent for the creation of a thing that was in the mind of the creator of the thing. I will repeat, purpose is the original intent for the creation of a thing that was in the mind of the creator of the thing. Purpose then, basically, in essence, is the reason for the creation of a thing. That's purpose. Purpose then is the why for a thing.
So now I'm going to give you seven principles that are going to change your life. Don't miss this and teach this to your children's children. Number one, God is a God of purpose. Write it down. God is a God of purpose. God does nothing without a purpose. God does nothing for the fun of it. Everything God does has a purpose. God is a God of purpose. Say it with me. Come on, sit up straight. Straighten your shoulders. Say it with me. God is a God of purpose. That means he does nothing without a purpose. The scriptures teach it from Genesis to Revelation that God does all things according to his purpose. How many things? All. That means everything has a purpose. That leads me to my second principle. Nothing in life is without purpose. Write it down. Nothing in life is without purpose. Nothing. Now say it with me. Nothing in life is without purpose. There's a purpose for the roach. There's a purpose for the mosquito. There's a purpose for the ant. There's a purpose for the maggot. There's a purpose for the snake. There's a purpose for the lice. There's a purpose for the fly and the bumblebee and the shark and the fish. There's a purpose for the lion. There's a purpose for everything. There's a purpose for the hair in your nose. There's a purpose for the hair under your arm that you shave off. There's a purpose for everything. God knew what he was doing and he gave everything a purpose. This is serious. Say it with me. Everything in life. Has a, has a purpose. Say with me, nothing in life, nothing in life is, without is without purpose. Third principle, not every purpose is known. Ah. I will repeat, not every purpose is known. Now we got to relate that to all the others. One, God is a God of purpose. Two, Everything in life has a purpose. Three, but not every purpose is known. Now, you got, you got to understand this. Everything has a purpose. God made nothing without a purpose. But not every purpose is known. That's dangerous. You know why we kill rats, mice? Do you know why we kill roaches? We don't really know their purpose. That's not funny. Those of you in this room today who are scientists in the field of ecology, you know what I'm talking about. There are animals that we killed off because we didn't know their purpose until it was too late. And it messed up the ecosystem. Now we're trying to conserve and preserve and reserve to try and save some so we could keep the balance. Why? God put them in there for a purpose. Every animal, every plant has a purpose. There's a purpose for cocaine. Don't get nervous. Look at your faces. Oh my God, he's going to sell drugs now. <laughs> oh, listen to me carefully. God created everything. Can I get an amen at least? Yeah. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that exists. Amen? So, all things were made by him. How many? All. all. If he made all, who made the rest? So God created marijuana. Come on, don't get nervous. Say yes. God created cocaine. Come on, say yes. Lord, they saying it on television. God created tobacco. Yes. 
Come on, say it like you believe it. Yes. <laughs> you should see your face, man. God created alcohol. Yes. Wow. Wow. No. We know God created everything. And everything has a purpose, but not every purpose is known. So I lead you to my fourth principle, where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Please write it down. Where purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. That means if you don't know the purpose for a thing, all you can do is abuse it. Now let me clear something real quick. The Holy Spirit showed me and then I had to go, of course, into my British grammar to decipher this revelation. Everybody say abuse. abuse. I want you to write the word down. Abuse. Now I'm going to take you back to the original foundation of that one word. It's made up of two words. Now, the British language is the original foundation for the English language that you speak here in America. And of course, coming from a British colony, you know, we, we had to learn all the original stuff. You know, jolly well old chap coming out there, fella. You know, we had to learn the stuff, you know what I mean? So we had to learn the real English grammar. And one thing they did was they, they, they spelled words out completely. But then as the language progressed, it changed and it became lazy. The Americans helped with that. And they began to squash words. Instead of saying, I am not coming, we'd say, I ain't coming. <laughs> Instead of saying, all of you, we say, y'all. You know, we just squash it. But that's what happened to this word. Now the word abuse, say it with me, abuse. It came from two words, abnormal use. They put the two words together and it eventually lost many of the letters. Abnormal use, abnormal use, abuse, abuse. That's where it came from. Where purpose is not known, abnormal use is inevitable. The implication is profound. Wherever there is abnormal use, there has to be a normal use. Have you noticed the, the term they use when someone abnormally uses uh, any kind of drug? They don't use the term that it is bad. They call it abuse. They didn't get that. They never say cocaine is bad. They never say marijuana is bad or alcohol is bad. What they say is it is being abused, abnormally used. That means there's a normal use for it. When you go to the hospital for an operation and they got to give you surgery, they, they put the stuff in you. Some of you had cocaine, didn't know it. To order today's complete message in a two-part CD or DVD set for your love gift of $30 or more, please visit our website, monroglobal.com, or call the number on your screen. Or for your love gift of $50 or more, you can get today's package deal, which includes the Power of Purpose two-part CD or DVD set, plus the accompanying books, Unleash Your Purpose, and the Living with Purpose devotional. Call the number on your screen today. Our team is standing by to assist you. Thank you for joining us today on The Legacy of Purpose, where my father spoke on the power of purpose. I uh, hope you join us next time. Kingdom citizens, this is Miles Monroe Jr. It's time for you to literally walk in the footsteps of Jesus. Join my sister and I and the host of Global Kingdom Citizens as we visit all the historical biblical landmarks of our faith. 
the Miles Monroe's Holy Kingdom Learning Experience, founded by our parents over 20 years ago, was designed to increase your understanding of the scriptures through an on-location teaching experience like none other. We will take you to the baptism place of Jesus on the Jordan River. We will visit the Temple Mount. We will see Armageddon and Nazareth. We will take a boat ride on the Sea of Galilee like the disciples. We will rediscover the Beatitudes and the place where Jesus taught them. We will experience the original church service in the upper room. Then study with us at the Garden of Gethsemane and have communion at the site of the empty tomb of Jesus. All this at a reduced cost for this year. Increase your kingdom knowledge with this advanced on-location life-changing experience. Go to theholylandkingdomexperience.com to reserve your space today. My life was being lived through both of my parents while they were here. I took things and people for granted, especially my parents. I never took life too seriously. So now what scares me is failing, but failing is also what drives me every day. Their leaving woke me up and made me realize I wasn't doing anything more than just existing. I've been given so much and I've been blessed to have people in my life that really inspire me and mean me well. I don't take them for granted anymore. I'm aware now, I'm awake now. I'm smarter and I have no problem making the right decision regardless of how it makes someone else feel. My parents' death helped me to rediscover my purpose. I pulled off an event last year that I wouldn't even fathom doing two years ago. The attendance may not have been where I wanted it to be, but the vision was established. And I know that the next event will be better and be that much more impactful. All we can do in life is try to be the best version of ourselves that we can be. We just give it all we've got and hope for the best to happen. Positive thinking and positive attitude goes a long way, never forgetting to enjoy incremental success. My parents leaving helped me realize that when you go, you leave everything behind. The key is to make sure that whatever you leave behind continues to impact, inspire, and expand. Feed your fear with faith, and then legacy happens. Think about it.